And welcome to New Scandinavian Cooking from Helgeland in northern Norway. I'm Andreas Wiestad. This coastline here is the land of fish. Fish has always been the most important thing. If the cod fisheries were particularly rich one year, you were rich. If they failed, you and your family suffered. But there was one fish that was something more than just a fish, something more than food or sustenance. Halibut was seen as a kind of godfish. It was worshipped, not just eaten. And although not many people bestow it with mythical properties these days, it's still the best fish in these waters, and that says a lot. It can be eaten very fresh or conserved for a very long time. In today's programme, I'll start off with a difficult cousin of the Atlantic halibut, namely the Greenland halibut. It's almost only served one way, namely smoked and salted. And I'll serve it together with smoked salmon, potato salad and blueberry vinegar. Halibut can be a really, really, really big fish. So when you have it, you often have a lot of it. Luckily, it can be preserved. And I think that pickled halibut is a true delicacy and also very versatile. You can use it in salads, on sandwiches, in soups and stews. Halibut is also a fish that can take on different qualities. Like most noble flatfish, it has a sort of lightness to it, a kind of ephemeral sweetness. I'm going to visit one of the world's northernmost herb gardens and I'm going to bake halibut and serve it with a light herb mustard sauce. On the other hand, halibut can also have a sort of meat-like quality to it. Like with tuna, it can be the fish for people who don't normally like fish. I'm going to fry it in the pan much as I would a steak and serve it with a rich veal demi-glace. Norway is a tiny and big country at the same time. It's only got about four and a half million inhabitants, but it is incredibly long and it's got all these different islands and fjords. And if you stretch out the coastline, you've got one of the longest coastlines in the world. And in order to understand Norway, you have to understand this geographical phenomenon. It is what has made Norway a seafaring nation. It's also what has made Norway a fishing nation. And you must also understand the Coastal Express. This ship that I'm on now is the old post line going from port to port in Norway and quite literally uniting the country. Today, the boat works as a cruise ship. You can come here, watch the beautiful scenery, and partake in a century-old tradition that helped unite this country. Today's program is about halibut, and halibut is truly one of the most delicious fishes in the world. And that's not just my opinion, that's the opinion of everyone who cares about fish. But halibut's also got a kind of ugly cousin. It's the Greenland halibut. The Greenland halibut is notoriously difficult to cook with. I've been to Greenland and there I only found one or two cooks who were able to do normal cooking with a Greenland halibut. But I think it is quite nice when you have it like this, salted and smoked. 
and especially if you serve it together with smoked salmon. They taste good together, but they also look good together. And the traditional thing to do is to heap a great deal of smoked fish onto a plate and then add some potato salad and then just to call that a fish platter. But what I've done is just blanch some spring onions, some scallions. And look, it's much better already. Remember, we eat with our eyes, not only with our mouths. Uh, and what it needs now is just a hint of something else, something a little bit acidic to pick up all the flavors. So I've got a bit of normal white wine vinegar here. And what I'm gonna add in addition to this is just some blueberries with this extreme color. Just a teaspoon of blueberries and you've got a blueberry vinegar. And here you are, just a few drops of this will do wonders for the potato salad, which might otherwise be considered a little bit dull. And here, the potato salad is completely transformed, both visually and flavor-wise. And the last ingredient I'm going to add is croutons. I've made croutons with dark rye bread. And you've got the smoky flavors, the salty flavors. You've got that light tartness of the potato salad and even a bit of crunchiness from the croutons. You can find all the recipes at our website, newsgangcook.com. Halibut is a flat fish. It lays on one side, but it's not always like that. It starts its life swimming upright like any normal fish. But then just as it starts to reach puberty, it lays down, it flips over, lays down over on the left side. And what happens after is truly remarkable. The left eye starts to migrate over what would be its, its nose. And then both eyes are on the upper side and the upper side changes color. It becomes kind of brown, almost blackish. And the underside is, is white. Halibut has been a constant factor along the coast as long as people have been fishing. And the nomadic people living in northern Norway 5,000 years ago and the Native Americans of the Northwest Pacific may not have that much in common, but they have at least one thing in common. They viewed halibut as almost a godfish. You can see it if you visit the northernmost part of Norway. There are rock carvings of halibut in various positions, some of them quite erotic, but some that also point out that halibut was almost like a god. And it's in our language every time we speak. The word halibut means holy butt or the holy flatfish. And it's the same in several other languages like Norwegian. And it's hard to speculate exactly why it's so, but you can only imagine if you were a fisherman living here and you had a tiny little boat, and you caught the 500-pound halibut, you would feel that you were facing something larger than yourself, larger than your boat, maybe larger than life itself. The Vega Archipelago can very easily strike you as almost painfully beautiful. Lots of islets and skerries surrounded by clear blue waters. But that's not the only reason why it has been inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Just as important are the cultural aspects. Here, near the Arctic Circle, you find a unique fishing and gathering community. The men would fish and the women would gather valuable edit down. 
Originally, the down was used just to keep warm, but edit down duvets soon became an expensive luxury commodity. It is often said of halibut that it's best after a couple of days, that it needs some time to mature for the flavors to come out. So I'm gonna make pickled halibut. And I just cut the fish into smaller pieces, stack the fish in several layers inside a glass jar, sprinkle each layer with salt, add a little bit of onion. This is red onion, but that's just because it looks nice. You can use normal yellow onion as well. Just have alternate layers like this. I'm gonna flavor it with some rosemary, a couple of sprigs, and some bay leaves. And in order to pickle the fish, you need both to expose it to a bit of heat and a bit of acidity. I've got a little bit of boiling water here that I'll season with red wine vinegar. One of the advantages of red wine vinegar is that it's both acidic and it has a bit of flavor. It has a very light, nice wine flavor. And in order to accentuate that, I'm adding a good splash of rosé wine as well, which will do basically the same thing. I'm adding a few black peppercorns. Let this boil for five to seven minutes until the alcohol is evaporated and it's got quite a nice peppery flavor. And of course, you need to heat it further. So I'm just placing it in a pot of boiling water and leaving it there for about 20, 25 minutes. At that point, the fish is cooked and all you need to do is just to put the lid on and it will be hermetically sealed. And it can keep for a very long time, even for months. This is just a couple of days old, but still you'll notice that the flavor develops. It has this lovely balance between the acidity and the saltiness and the flavors of the sea. Near the coast, it's quite windy and the weather conditions can be harsh. But if you just move a little bit inland, it's something completely different. We're at Hildur's Uterarium, a herb garden just outside of Brennesen. And at first, you're kind of impressed that they can grow parsley here that looks this strong and healthy. But then you taste it. And you realize that it is partially taken to another dimension. And for good reason. With the summers that we have here, with a lot of sun and relatively low temperatures, there's plenty of time for the different flavor and aroma compounds to develop. 
It's a bit like with wine. Many wines are at their best when grown near the northernmost boundary of where they can grow. That's why Pinot Noirs from Burgundy are so great and Rieslings from Germany. It's a bit the same with herbs. Here I've got some oregano. A little bit of lovage, but not too much, because then it becomes overpowering. A little bit of mint as well. And my general rule when I use herbs in my cooking is that I have no rule. I follow my nose and my intuition. So the food tastes a little bit different every time. Herbs and halibut is a particularly good match since halibut's very mild and it's very susceptible to other flavors as well. So you can flavor it with basically anything you want. With herbs, you get that nice aromatic feeling to it. I'm gonna add sage as well. A small sprig of sage and a little sprig of thyme. I'm gonna do something a little bit unusual. I'm gonna bake the fish with a cucumber so that there will be sort of a cucumber juice in the pan afterwards. To bring out some of the moisture, I'll just sprinkle it with sugar and a little bit of salt and toss it around like this. I see that there are some zucchini here. Look at it, it's so crispy that it breaks at the slightest touch. And a good lump of butter, cover quite tightly with foil, and then bake in the oven at 400 degrees, that's 200 centigrade, for 20 to 25 minutes. And what we want to achieve is that it steams in its own juices and the juices from the cucumber. But you might do well to check it after 15 minutes or so. If it looks a little bit dry, then add half a glass of water or dry white wine. This here is a scented garden, a perfumed garden. And this here is that garden trapped in a dish. It smells amazing. And quite a lot of liquid has accumulated here. And I'm gonna use that to make a sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit of mustard. Mustard adds flavor, but it's also a quite efficient emulsifier. Can you see how fast it starts to thicken? It's almost like magic. And for the fish, I'm gonna remove all the herbs now. They've given away their flavor. With a halibut, you just need to kind of undress it like this. I'll serve it with the cucumber and the zucchini, and then I'm gonna pour the herby mustard sauce over it. Doesn't that look nice? You can find all the recipes at our website, newsgangcook.com. There are more than 6,500 islands, islets, and skerries here, which make it kind of difficult to get around if you travel by road. But at the time when sea travel was the rule, not the exception, it made it easy and safe because you could always row out and you would be safe, even if it started to blow, you would always be able to get ashore. But although the weather here can be fierce, the climate has one advantage. It's not very warm here during summer, I can admit that. But because of the warm currents of the Gulf Stream, it's not very cold here during winter either. That means that there's not much snow here, and you can do a little bit of agriculture. So a normal family could have maybe one cow and four sheep, so together, with the fisheries that actually added up. And also the halibut loves this kind of environment. It doesn't like it if it's too shallow or too deep. So the environment 
in between all the islets and skerries, that's the perfect breeding ground for halibut. those who love fish and will do anything for a good piece of fish but there are also people who don't really like fish at all and they will either eat meat or very often in a restaurant if they have to eat fish they will order tuna halibut can have some of those same qualities as fish for people who don't really like fish i'm going to make what the french call steak frit which is basically steak and fries with a really meaty sauce. And to start with the sauce, I've got here a veal stock that is quite heavily reduced. It's not too salty, and I'm gonna add vanilla to it. Just a piece like this. I'll add it to the veal stock. It's funny weather we've got here now. This morning I was thinking, this is September, it's like summer, and now it's like the icy claws of winter has come to get us. But you know what they say, if you can't stand the rain and the wind, then get out of the kitchen. Season it with salt and pepper and fry it in butter. Meanwhile, I'm going to make fries, because a good steak should come with fries. It's not the healthiest thing in the world, but it's very nice. Some people go to a lot of effort by double frying. That makes very good fries. But another thing which is much simpler is just cooking the potatoes first. And since they're cooked, you don't really have to think about cutting them precisely the same size. And I deep fry the fries at a relatively high temperature uh, at about 350 or 175 degrees Celsius. Ah, now it's finished and I like my fries like this, deep golden on their way to becoming brown. Steak, fries, you can find all the recipes at our website, newscancook.com. And then the sauce. And the last thing that I'm going to add is a bit of, can you guess what it is? It's halibut fat. It is a delicacy. And in the old times, people here in Northern Norway used this instead of butter because butter was incredibly expensive. But it is one of the nicest and also healthiest of all the fish fats. So here you have it. It's a steak, but it's from the ocean. It's delicious. It's very, very different from the herb baked version, but it's still the same fish. It's just bringing out completely different qualities in it. And now the wind has picked up as well, so you better hold on to your glass and plate.